Kofas publishes a panorama of emerging markets. Uh, Yves Lutovsky, welcome. Hello. You are the chief economist of Kofas. How has emerging market uh, risk evolved since 2008? Well, in fact, it has clearly improved. You know, uh, we have seen a dramatic crisis in advanced economies, but we have seen emerging markets extremely resilient, firstly in terms of growth, that's for sure. And I think what has been really striking is the fact that emerging markets have really had uh, a lot of uh, fiscal packages in order, you know, to absorb the external shocks coming from advanced economies. But when you look at their public debt, they have been fairly stable, very, very low. Uh, when you look at their liquidity in U.S. dollars, extremely high. So clearly, not only uh, they have stayed resilient uh, to external shocks, but also they have almost improved, financially speaking, uh, despite the crisis. So we can say that traditional country risk, in a way, for emerging markets has been extremely stable. Has the Arab Spring modified your view of political risk? Uh, yes, very much so. Because in fact, uh, what has been a problem is that uh, we thought, and many observers thought, that all these regimes that fell apart uh, in one year or two years were considered very stable. So I think we had to look a bit more deeply about the changes that, but that were not very visible in emerging markets. I think there are two aspects. The first one is that the demands from the societies in emerging markets have evolved very much. Now there is a clear demand of participation. There is a demand of democracy in a wider sense, clearly, because you have emerging middle classes that are extremely more uh, demanding in terms of uh, their rights. And secondly, in terms of tools, it's also true that the, the societies have more tools to express these demands. Uh, the role of women has changed. Uh, the young people are more and more educated, and uh, you have also internet access that has improved. And of course, all the social networks have, ho have helped very much in order to mobilize the population. So I think those changes have to be taken into account in uh, political risk visions now. We're seeing a rise in protectionism in emerging markets. What are your thoughts? Well, it is extremely difficult to measure because uh, emerging markets, of course, have uh, since 2008 have had pro to protect their markets in a way, but uh, they've also launched a lot of uh, market-friendly, uh, trade-friendly uh, measures, if you, if you say. So the, the, the net result of these measures is, is not very easy to grasp. Nevertheless, there is a, a really profound tendency of, a, of more pragmatism towards, I would say, globalization in a way. Um, one thing that has been very striking, for example, is that, as I said, you have a lot of measures in order to sustain uh, infrastructures uh, from the, on the public side. But most of this uh, help is uh, very often reserved to domestic producers. And I think this is an issue because now you know that for uh, the Eurozone, exports towards emerging market is clearly a key driver of growth. And it seems in, in the actual context that uh, emerging markets are a little less open to uh, our product because they want to develop their own industries, especially in, inf in infrastructure. Is there any risk regarding the financial systems of emerging markets? I would say not on the short term, because if you look at the, the past of emerging markets, they have improved very much their banking system. Uh, that's clear. Nevertheless, uh, since they have implemented a very, very supportive monetary policies, this has, of course, had the effect to uh, boost uh, domestic credit, credit to households, credit to, uh, to corporates, and uh, sometimes too fast. And especially in Asia. Uh, of course, Asia has had a very strong growth, but this strong growth is also held by very, very dynamic credit. So this is a danger because sometimes banks would grant credit to corporates or to households and they have not always verified the quality of their risk. And this is a risk, a future risk for the quality of the portfolio of the banks. I don't think it's a short term risk, but this is something that clearly we have to watch in the next two or three years. And, you know, China is a clear case. Uh, the credit in China has been extremely dynamic. Um, and sometimes it has been granted to entities who are maybe uh, now carrying too much debt, too much leverage. Uh, and namely, uh, local, uh, local authorities has a, have a very large debt, and this is something clearly that has to be watched in China. Yves Lutovsky, Chief Economist of COFAS, thank you very much. Thank you.